Hello, this is Sandout here, and welcome back to Sandout's Pickups. This week, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> For whatever reason, this was seemed to be the week that I managed to get quite a bit. Um, so, we actually had to expand to two tray tables this time. Mostly because of that thing back there, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this would be everything I picked up between March 3rd and March 9th, 2019. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, approximately five minutes after I finished filming last week's video, I got a delivery from Amazon with Marvel Legends Red Goblin. And I said to myself, I'm not reshooting that video just for Red Goblin, but here we are. Uh, Red Goblin is the fusion of Norman Osborn and the Carnage symbiote, uh, which is why it's probably the most popular figure of the way, because it's a Carnage symbiote and a Green Goblin. So the two Spider-Man archetypes right there at one. Uh, it's a pretty cool figure. Uh, like I usually say with Marvel Legends, I'll get into further detail when I do my rundown at the end of the year. But I do like the Pumpkin Bomb especially. The face is a little creepy. Uh, and I do like the tail. The tail is probably the coolest part because it's a newly molded piece. And it balances them out really well. Uh, which gives them some nice dynamic posing. Of course, I mostly got this for the Kingpin Builder figure piece. Uh, but I've actually kind of liked this design more now that I've had it as a figure. Um, so that was that. Uh, moving along to, let's see, Sunday, uh, went out to Target for something unrelated, but came home with Shockwave. Uh, this is the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege Leader Class Shockwave. Now, I have been wanting a properly sized Shockwave in the Generations Classic style for a very long time. Uh, I even picked up the Cyber Battalion as a kind of a stand-in, and I'm finally happy to have this one. Now, I don't necessarily think he should have been a leader class. I think he could have been maybe a new price point, like something like an Ultra class. Remember those guys? Remember Ultra class? Ultra class were fun. It was like the stop point between a Voyager and a leader. Uh, I, I do miss those. This kind of feels like an Ultra class. Uh, basically, what makes him a leader class is all these extra weapon parts, but we can just kind of take these off uh, because... What I'm really focused on here is, uh, is this one here. So, as you can see, Shockwave here just looks absolutely beautiful. Um, he is super G1, but he's got like the techie detail, so he fits with my, you know, Universe Classic stuff. I'm not buying every remake in Siege just because of budgeting, but I would if I, you know, didn't have other things to get. Uh, Solo Chigokin Voltrons come to mind. But I do really like this. The light piping is especially good. Um, the weapons are cool, I, I do admit that, but I do like how he's got the hose, he's got, you know, every detail, the articulation's really solid. I, I do really like this figure, I, I just wish it wasn't 50 bucks. That's like the the one caveat where it's like, okay, if he was like a $30 Voyager, or even like a $40 Ultra with all those little parts, uh, it would be okay. I think the price is a little high, um, but at the end of the day, I like this size, he's gonna fit with Megatron uh, nicely in Soundwave. So that's, that's really what matters to me. Um, I'm probably going to get Megatron, Starscream, and Sound... Uh, I'm definitely going to get Soundwave, but Megatron and Starscream are two of the remakes that I actually do want to get because of nicely scaling. I, I've wanted a Voyager-sized Shockwave for a long time, and he looks fantastic. So he goes in the I'm really happy with my purchase pile. Moving along to Monday, uh, I think we'll go with the Amazon shipment first, which would be Marvel Legends Silver Sable. Um... Like I mentioned last week when I picked up the Moon Gundam, I'd gone out looking for uh, Marvel Legends in stores. Red Goblin was the one that I couldn't find at GameStop. I also couldn't find the other five because the system was screwed up. Silver Sable is one of the ones I went looking for, and I managed to grab an order for her on Amazon later that day when she restocked. Um, absolutely fantastic figure. Uh, I wanted Sable for a very long time in this line, and she's finally here, and I totally want to get one to make a little laundry custom with that Mystique. Laundra head that came out. But yeah, definitely cool. Uh, this was the number one figure of the way for me that I wanted, and I'm finally glad to have her because now everything else is just for Kingpin, essentially. Uh, the other four, while well, there's some cool figures in there and I'm looking forward to getting them, it's mostly for Kingpin at this point. But yeah, so that's Sable. Um, moving along to also Monday, uh, we, again, ignoring the giant elephant in the room. Let's talk about the other giant elephant. Let's get him over here. The Amazon exclusive 10 inch Giant Man Pop. Now, like I've mentioned before, I do collect Funko Pops, or I did collect Funko Pops, so I'm kind of cutting back now. This was one I had to have. Uh, I have all the Ant-Man and Wasp and Ant-Man Pops, uh, and this is exactly what I wanted 
when they made the Civil War version. The Civil War version was a six inch pop of Giant Man. It was a little bit bigger than other pops. So it wasn't really that exciting. But now they're doing all these 10 inch pops. This is what I was looking for. Uh, it's a upscale version of the normal Ant-Man pop from Ant-Man and the Wasp, but they've added a lot of great sculpted detail uh, inside, which just looks amazing. Like that, that is incredible. Like this is what it should look like when you blow the sculpt up. Um, he's got the eye lenses. He's a bobblehead because Marvel licensing. So he's got like the biggest spring ever in there. And his head's big enough. I could probably shove two Funkos in there if I show so choose to uh but he's absolutely awesome and i'm so happy he's not target school so because target school so 10 inch pops have been kind of hard to get um i only barely got the dragon sword only barely got mickey mouse from my mom so it's like you know getting this from amazon where i just had to hit click order <laughs> and then it showed up like a month later that that's something like i can work with that um so definitely happy with my 10 inch giant man pop uh he is amazing and he he's a giant bobblehead which is hilarious. So let's get him back over here, uh, way in the back. It's part of the reason why I had to use two trade tables. Now, the next thing is something that uh, I want to talk about last. Um, I had I, I want to mention it now, but I'm going to discuss it because I got to move everybody else out of the way to, to really look at it. Um, and that would be the narrative gun back there. Uh, let's just say after last week when I said, oh. You know, there's a narrative gun I'm sitting at my Barnes and Noble, and if I just had a good coupon and some extra money, I'd go for it. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to build that up for a while. Uh, so the other thing I picked up at Barnes and Noble would be the uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Converge Series Sazabi, because I like the Sazabi. And last time I was at Barnes and Noble, there was like three of the Sazabis, and I was like, oh, I kind of want one. And then this time I went, there was only one, and I was like, well... I'm already here, <laughs> so I decided to get the Sazabi. A uh, really cool little figure, Gundam Converge, for those that don't know, are just like little SD style figures. Um, they're pretty static, the arms do move. Okay, his hand popped off. Where'd the hand go? Okay. Um, yeah, so we got the Sazabi. Uh, the cool part is he actually comes with his beam axe here, which uh, can come out of the hand, but you can swap the hand and have him hold the rifle. Uh, he does hold the rifle by the the barrel parks he's not actually using it to shoot but that's kind of a nice static stock pose where he's not really ready to battle but you can kind of have him in a more battle pose with the with the b max so he's really cool really neat um these are like eight bucks at barnes and noble so they're not too expensive but I, I do really like them i have a gundam dynamis uh to go with it but yeah so that, that was basically monday <laughs> that was monday guys uh let's see fast forward to wednesday you know, I'm going to stop remembering dates, and we're just going to keep going forward. Uh, we'll just head this way. So, uh, next up, we have DC Multiverse, Gotham by Gaslight, Batman, The Ray, Lex Luthor, and Wonder Woman. Now, this is a fun little story. So, for those that don't know, this wave was supposed to be out in March of 2018. It is March of 2019, and I finally got them. Uh, I had originally ordered them through a website called Palmart Store. Uh, back in, well, I originally ordered from Big Bad Toy Store, and then the order wasn't coming in, and a website called Palmart Store, which is a smaller business, uh, really great store, uh, they got in the wave, and so I ordered it on their Black Friday sale, so I was like, okay, um, and then they didn't ship for a while, so I emailed uh, customer service there, and I got the message back that, hey, sorry we haven't shipped your order yet, Mattel only sent us half our shipment. <laughs> so they only sent 50 of the 100 cases they were supposed to get, so I was like, oh, okay then um, but they did offer me the chance to get the Lobo wave in place of the Lex Luthor wave uh, which I actually you know I took up off, off took them up on that offer because that was a much better wave um, so ever since then I've been trying to hunt down the Lex Luthor wave now some people have been finding them in stores other people finding them online um, I ordered them from Big Bad Toy Store uh, with the intention of, of getting those through them but a few days later <laughs> I walk into Target and find these three lovely people for $5.98 each instead of $19.99. So yeah, that worked out. Uh, if you recall from a previous episode of Status Pickups, I got a DC Multiverse Vixen for 40 bucks off eBay. <laughs> so the extra 20 I spent there and then the less money I spent here kind of resulted in a, I'd say more balanced uh, price for the wave. Uh, so let's take a look at the figures. Uh, I'm not actually going to review these. Um, first up, we have Gotham by Gaslight Batman. 
uh, based on Batman Gotham by Gaslight, the Victorian era Batman where he's hunting down uh, Jack the Ripper. This figure actually turned out really cool. Uh, first up, they actually fixed the faux leather cape issue uh, on the Justice League uh, Batfleck and the Val Kilmer Batman. They had this issue where they would the capes would curl up at the ends because uh, they weren't finished on the edge properly, but they finally fixed that for this one, which looks awesome. Uh, the only thing is at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, this point at the end of the cape is a little long, so it does drag on the ground. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. Uh, but overall really cool. The articulation is good. He's got the you know proper ankle tilts He's got these really cool alternate hands where he's about ready to grapple somebody uh, Which I think is cool. He's also got two uh, Let's see. It's not two fists. I know that but it's a uh, it's a fist and an open hand Oh, no, it's the fist actually has uh, holding for the knives the knives being the ones in his belt that all come out and I do mean all of them like they all come out of there. Uh, just take my word for it. I don't want to lose these, but I kind of want to show off the fact that, yeah, we'll do it this way. Um, so that one comes out. Like, I, I thought they were just, like, molded in separate colors, and Mattel's doing really good with detailing, and then I was like, oh, they all are removable. Which is insane. Like, that is, like, some tiny accessories. That's something that Hasbro won't do. <laughs> I'll give Mattel credit there. Uh, but overall, this Batman is fantastic. He's probably my favorite of the wave, to be honest. Um, I'm not usually a huge Batman fan. I'm more Bat family, but this is just a cool figure uh, overall. Moving along to the next best figure of the wave, we have the Ray. Now, the Ray is a character that DC Classics collectors have been asking for for a long time, especially after we got Uncle Sam. Uh, so we finally got the Ray. Absolutely perfect figure, honestly. Like, I. The only real problem with him is that he only has single jointed elbows, but they come to a full 90, so I really can't complain about that too much because Marvel Legends double joints only go to 90. Um, the really the only problem I think is that there's like no effect parts for his uh, for his fists or anything to have like light effects. That would have been really cool. Um, but overall, like the body mold's good. It's the one that they later used for Batman Beyond and Kid Flash, which I thought was fantastic. It's got like the full ankle tilts. It's the most articulation I've seen in a Mattel DC figure. Uh, he comes with these useless hands, which are holding hands, but I don't know what they're for, because there's nothing for him to hold. And he does come with a normal, uh, neutral expression, as well as the smile. I like the smile, it gives him a little variety, kind of fits the character, really cool. Uh, now we come to Hot Garbage. Uh, <laughs> this Wonder Woman is problematic, and I'm not just talking about the face. The face is kind of bad, like, it's got, she's got, like, really odd eye placement, and then the sculpt is just off entirely. Now the problem here is, uh, as you can see here, you notice how this skin tone, this skin tone, and that skin tone aren't the same? It's like this is painted to be a flesh color. This is also painted, but it's not the same as the actual plastic used here. And then also down here, you get this wonderful, and I say that sarcastically, where you have like a completely different shade of skin tone compared to the upper thigh. So it's like where the thigh swivel is, this is painted, this is not. This doesn't match this, doesn't match this, doesn't match this. She has one, two, three, four, five different skin tones on this figure. That's not okay. Like, that's just not, I don't know. Also, it it's weird to say this, but I think her chest isn't big enough. Uh, it looks like it's disproportionate. Like, this part is, like, reused from the female body mold. Or, like, no, this the, the arms and the legs are from the new female body mold, but the chest is new, but it's, like, smaller. Uh, so it looks disproportionate. She's got, like, a super long neck. Um, I really wanted this figure to be great. I was like, oh, cool, finally get a Wonder Woman with double-jointed knees. But this ain't it. This ain't it, Chief. Uh, this ain't it. Uh, the cool part with this figure, though, is the lasso. The lasso is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm probably going to swap that over to DC Classics Wonder Woman. Um, but, you know, it looks really good. Uh, she also has another lasso that actually hooks on her, her belt here, uh, which is great. I wish Wonder Woman figures did that more. Um, she also has an alternate fist for one of the hands, which really serves no purpose, and she's got a sword, uh, which, you know, sword's pretty standard at this point, but yeah, this Wonder Woman, I don't know what I'm gonna do with her, aside from just use her accessories and other figures, uh, she's just, she's not great, I can't, can't dodge around that one, she's really lacking, uh, also her feet are tiny, which I hate when that happens, uh, stand, never mind. Super Lex, uh, this is the Lex Luthor in his uh, Apocalyptan armor that he's modeled to look like Superman, uh, that he decided to become the Superman in Metropolis once New 52 Superman had died. Uh, but he did get this during the Dark Side War, which is one of my favorite New 52 era stories. 
uh, especially the Justice League stuff. Uh, this is a really good figure. Uh, I do like the head sculpt. I think it's one of the better Lex sculpts. I think the older ones from DC Classics were a little lacking. Um, articulation is uh, fantastic. The only real issue I had was getting the limbs in because it was just, like really hard to get around these shoulder pads and then getting the legs on was really hard for some reason. Uh, and the cape falls off. That's kind of the biggest issue here. Uh, they gave them a, a, a rubber cape. It's actually not full plastic, it's rubber, which is nice because it's malleable. Um, also, you can take, and the nice part is you can take it off and have them sit in the Mobius chair if you so wish. Um, but you know, it, it's like that. Um, he also, I guess I completely forgot this. The Lex also has this extra head. This is the uh, Lord of the Apocalypse head. This came with Spoiler, which is a Walmart exclusive. Uh, you can swap this on pretty easily. We're gonna take the cape off to simplify things. But this, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I, it's something from the comics. Uh, the mother box that came with Harley you can just kind of float next to him in some way. Can't really hold it uh, because of the way the hands are. Doesn't have any way to hold it. <laughs> it doesn't even, you can't even like hold it under his arm just because of the way the armor is. But uh, it looks pretty cool. I do like the, the alternate head look. Let's see, let me put the cape on. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to do a, I'll do a picture shoot at some point, uh, putting him in the Mobius chair and then um, have the mother box somehow float next to him. I kind of want to do that as a little Photoshop project. But yeah, it's cool. Uh, I do like those alternate parts with exclusives that's uh that's a cool business model so that does it for the multiverse stuff i am officially caught up on the comic figures uh, i've given up on movie figures <laughs> just because of availability issues and uh so yeah I, i'm i'm pretty much caught up with the dc multiverse comic figures the next wave is the batman ninja collecting connect which is we're just gonna leave those down there um which is going to have like six figures or something. It's scheduled for April. We'll see if it actually comes out. Uh, moving down the line, let's look at the other DC thing I got today. And this week, uh, we have Red Robin as a Funko Pop. This is a Hot Topic exclusive. Uh, this is the Tim Drake Robin based on his New 52 look with the showgirl wings. Uh, I would have liked a Rebirth look or, you know, maybe more of a classic Tim or... I don't really want classic Red Robin. I think that design needs to stay in Kingdom Come. Uh, but this one's really cool because it's Tim Drake Robin. It's distinctively Tim Drake. Uh, again, I love the Bat Family and I really wanted to get him. I missed out on the Jason Todd Red Hood pop because it was a stupid con exclusive. Luckily, wasn't an issue getting Red Robin in my store. A uh, Hot Topic store from the cl closest mall had like 40 of them. So that worked out. I, I just I really wanted Tim. So we got that. Uh, moving along, uh, let's talk about the Battle Droid. I actually got this this morning. Uh, this is making it easier just to go down the line. Uh, this is the Star Wars Black Series 6-inch Battle Droid. Uh, I've been waiting six years for this. Like, literally, I thought, you know, as soon as they made a clone trooper in Black Series, I was like, oh, they probably make Battle Droids at some point, because that's also an easy repaint thing. But I think they kind of ran out of clone troopers, and then were like, oh, let's do Battle Droids. They haven't run out of clone troopers, by the way. There's still a bunch more they could do. But they finally did the Battle Droid, probably because of the Phantom Menace 20th anniversary. But I'm super happy with this. Uh, I've always loved the Battle Droid design since I was a kid, and this is just super cool. He's got like ankle rockers in a way. Um, he's actually got like tilting joints and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, his legs don't have a whole lot of range of motion. Uh, they're really restrictive, unfortunately. And I think it's just due to the design, like you just can't do a whole lot with this. Uh, but he does have the ability to fold up uh, due to the neck extending like this. And then you can, let's pop the gun out of his hand real quick. And then you can just fold, the cool part is like these rotate so that you can have like the proper positioning like this. And I just bring the legs up like that. So you can have the battle droid in the crouched position from the movie. You can even peg on the blaster to the backpack. So this is like, this is essentially perfect. Um, there hasn't been many uh, 3.75 inch battle droids that can do this from what I know. Uh, I haven't had one that's been able to do this properly, but this is super cool. Uh, I really like this. Just, I just really like this figure. Um, he's, he's something I've been wanting. I've been wanting battle droids in six inch for a while. And they finally here. Uh, I do like all the extra joint movement. It really does give it that extra dimension. Like being able to turn here, this, the hinged wrists are awesome. The rotation here, the actual shoulders that move out. I don't know if any vintage collection or something like that did that, but that's something I've I've never seen before. It's just really great stuff. 
And to top it all off, just to put the cherry on top of the battle droid, we have uh, the backpack comes off, it also flies, and you can attach the little antenna piece. So there we go. We got the perfect battle droid. He can be the episode two version or the episode one version. The arm articulation works out so you can actually hold the blaster properly. Um, and it doesn't actually fall out of his hand. It's really hard to get it out of his hand, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I love the battle droid. Uh, I got this from Amazon. I sniped it when it went up in stock. Uh, I don't do pre-orders from Amazon anymore, but I did manage to get him when he said in stock. So awesome stuff. Uh, moving along to the non-action figures. Uh, got my Nintendo Switch Online service, finally. Took me a little bit. Uh, Smash Brothers really was like, I, I need to get this. So I got that. Uh, nothing big deal there. I got this new controller dock. <laughs> Just because we're going into video game talk now. So, for those that don't know, I do like having Nintendo Switch controller docks. Specifically because... Let's just took the camera down. Uh, specifically because I like being able to drop and charge with stuff. Um, I've never found one for PlayStation I really like. But this is a two Joy-Con, one Pro Controller dock. So essentially, you plug it into the system so it charges. Uh, you can drop in the Joy-Cons like this. No problem. The Pro Controller, which I love the Pro Controller. Uh, you can pull this little thing out, plug it on here, and then it just drops and it'll charge. So basically, all I have to do to go play the game is just pick it up. And then I don't, I don't even worry about taking this out most of the time. So I can just, you know, do whatever. And then I'm done. I can just drop it in and it'll stay charged. It'll stay charged that way. It's really nice. Uh, the other part that's good for organization is that the cord can actually wrap up underneath like this, uh, which is actually incredibly handy for a lot of reasons. Uh, so that way I can kind of manage my cords a little bit better. Uh, that's something that a lot of things need to have. But yeah, so that's the controller dock. I got it on sale. Uh, Target's website had it for 15, so they let me price match in store, which is super nice. Let's go to This Week in Home Video. Even though none of these things came out this week, I just got them this week. Uh, first up, Best Buy actually got in Mazinger Z Infinity on Blu-ray. Uh, I saw this about a year ago in theaters. Look at the way that changes my lighting. Um, I saw this at the, the Fathom Event Run, uh, which was a sub-only release, which I really liked because Super Raw anime dubs tend to suck. Uh, really nice Blu-ray cover, by the way. Uh, so Viz Media finally released it on home video with a dub. I'm not a big fan of the dub, but uh, this is an absolutely fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it and you like Missinger, do yourself a favor and, and watch this movie. Uh, it's absolutely one of the best super robot films I've seen. Plot is cohesive. Uh, characters get their proper screen time. It's easy to follow. The animation is gorgeous. It's CG for the mecha stuff, but it looks really good. Uh, there's some bonus features on here that I haven't watched yet. This is just a movie I really, really adore and love. Um, I was really happy to get it in store. That was really nice, because uh, I've usually had to order all the other Mazinger home video releases from the internet. Um, so that was cool. Uh, Pokemon, the movie I Choose You. I've been going through and realizing I was missing a few Pokemon movies. This one was a clear one. I've been holding out way too long on this release. Uh, I've, I've seen the movie already. I did like it. Um, it's got, you know, you can have a discussion about you know, oh, they rewrote history or whatnot, but it's a cool way to do like an anniversary movie. It kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Path to Power, except this one got a sequel on like Path to Power. This was on sale at Best Buy for eight bucks uh, for the Blu-ray. So I was like, you know what? That's the time now to get it. Uh, really cool. It looks really nice on Blu-ray and uh, I'm pretty happy. So I, I still have two more. I, I ordered the last two I'm missing from Amazon, so they should be here soon. Uh, so probably next week we'll talk about those. Um, and then I just gotta wait for the the power of us to come out. Best Buy also had Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on sale. Uh, this is a movie, again, haven't seen this one yet. Uh, I've I've talked about, I think, I, I don't know, Jurassic World stuff before. I took four years to watch the first Jurassic World, so I'm still three years ahead of schedule if I watch this like next week. Um, but this is the Steelbook release, uh, and it was on sale for 10 bucks. Uh, so I decided, hey, I heard people tell me, don't spend too much to watch this movie, and so, boom, 10 bucks and a steel book. It's a win-win. I'm hoping there'll be a Jurassic World trilogy pack, though, when the third movie comes out. Because um, I'd like to just buy the Jurassic World trilogy, because I already have the Jurassic Park trilogy on Blu-ray, but I might buy a pack of six. We'll see. Uh, it depends on how they release it. And then lastly, uh, Target had DC Superhero Girls Legends of Atlantis for 10 bucks. Uh, I still have only watched the first DC Superhero Girls movie. Uh, this is one of those cases of... Uh, DC Superhero Girls is one of those franchises, I say, 
case, is my case in point for my 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 lifelong mantra mantra of just because it wasn't made for you doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Obviously, DC Superhero Girls is aimed at preteen girls, but I still enjoy it because it's well written. It's got comedy. It's got action. Uh, the animation's pretty okay. I think that the new series, the TV show that just actually debuted yesterday, uh, is is a, is a, is got better animation and better look to it, and probably overall higher quality. But I like these direct video movies that DC does that are outside of the you know PG thirteen to R rated ones, and more like the kid friendly ones. They're kind of just fun to sit down and watch. Uh, this also has the TV special, Superhero High, which was the start of the franchise. I thought this would have been on the first movie release, but this is the third movie, it's the last movie, before the art style changes and everything is different. Uh, but I really enjoyed DC Superhero Girls as, you know, animation. I watched a bunch of the web shorts. I need to just, like, I, now that I got this, I just, like, want to watch everything in order. <laughs> it's super fun stuff. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to the new show. And then we'll talk about the last thing in the room. Uh, let's just, I don't know, do that. This video's gotten derailed, guys. All right. <laughs> so this was my pickup of the week that I got on a, that's, we're not, we're too close. Okay. This is the Mole Suit Gundam Narrative High Grade Universal Century Narrative Gundam Apex. Why did I buy this? I don't know. I just really wanted a giant weapons rack with a Gundam attached to it because they have made several of these before. There's been like the, you know, the Dendrobrium, the GP03 from Stardust Memory. There's been the G Cell Perfect Packs. There's or the and also the Assault Pack, um, the G the G in Arms for Double O. I never got either of those. I really wanted the one with the Dynamis though. Um, and I've really, I've wanted like one of these, you know, mobile suits that's also kind of a mobile armor where it's like, technically it's still a mobile suit, but we put so much armor on it. It's might as well be a mobile armor. I wanted one of these things as a kit for a while. And this was my chance. Uh, I got a 20% off coupon in the mail from Barnes and Noble, had my 10% membership discount, had money I got from my state tax refund and boom, now I got the narrative. Uh, the funny story with this is, like I said, the Apex, uh, having seen the movie, the Apex had, I think, a whole one fight sequence. <laughs> so really, this thing didn't get a whole lot of use in the anime. The B Packs, I think, have the long... I need to check when I get the movie on Blu-ray. It's either the B or the C had the most screen time. The C Packs is going to be its own kit release, uh, which is probably the one most people are going to go for to get a narrative Gundam. The B Packs is a premium Bandai part set to go with this guy. Like you can't use it on the CPAC, you have to use it on the APAC version. I'll probably pick up that set if I can, uh, just to kind of have the, because I also want the CPAC, so I have like the narrative Gundam Trinity there. But yeah, no, I just wanted a big, stupid, giant weapons rack. Like, look at this thing. I don't even know where I'm going to put it when I build it. Like, that is just, that is huge. It stands for the guns. Plus, you know, I, I can always just strip out the the Apex, uh, the narrative Gundam. I think eventually I'll probably leave it like fully assembled as the Apex and then probably just take the narrative out and put the B-Pax on it whenever I get the B-Pax. Um, this is High Grade Universal Century 218. Uh, it retailed for $60. I did not pay 60. I paid, I think I paid, uh, what was it? I paid 55 with tax for this and the Sazabi. Like my original total was like 78 bucks or something and then the coupons applied and it came down to 55. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, probably going to be Model Kit Monday videos on this. This is going to be a long build. Um, I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to start it now or wait. Probably start it soon. I'm really excited. I just finished the Moon Gundam, and I uh, I really, really want to crack into that. So that does it for this week on Santa's Pickups. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, this is the longest video I've absolutely made for the series. If it ran too long, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I just kind of wanted to cover a lot of stuff. I wanted to talk about the DC figures without doing a review and you know transformer stuff and all that so that does it for this week on soundouts pickups as a reminder this series airs every sunday afternoon uh comes out usually between 3 and 5 p.m eastern but i don't have a set time there but also don't forget model kit monday is every monday at 8 p.m eastern right here on soundout 12 i do a premiere for each episode tomorrow's video will be the high grade universal century sananju stein kind of ironic considering the apex here uh, also check out Ninja Talks Gundam Live on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is an hour after Model Kit Monday debuts, where I'm on talking about Gundam X this week. And also, 
be sure to stay tuned for future sound out reviews. I have one in the pipeline that should be coming out this week. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Um, but there is more content coming, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything coming up in the future. So let me know what your favorite thing was that I bought this week in the comments below. Hit that like button to make sure we get some support on the channel so YouTube can continue to advertise and feature my videos. And until next time, this is Sound Out saying goodbye.